Hello and welcome to another Igloo Imaging tutorial. This one's on an optical illusion, the impossible oval. I just like the effect, so I thought I'd figure out the easiest way of making this um, and let you guys know. Hope you enjoy it. Right, let's get cracking. Um, the first thing we're going to do is colors. If you want to follow exactly with what I'm doing, add these CMYK colors to your swatches. There's some, there's white and gray, a lighter gray, a gradient with a left and right blue here, turquoisey color. This gradient's our background, the first one we're going to do, um, and it's got four. So the lighter gray is on the left, and you've got a white with your, um, your gradient location markers just moved in as much as you can, then another white, and then your darker gray. So copy these colors down, add them to your swatches, and then we can get started. So just hit pause and do that. All right, okay. So we're gonna do, first thing first is the artboard, which is always 1920 by 1080 pixels on these tutorials. So get yourself an artboard. I've already got this in place. If you are running Illustrator 2021, they've got a very handy lock and unlock feature now so when you've got a background layer that's locked if you go to select it and just hit a padlock there it's the same with anything anything if i hit command 2 and lock this one i lock the background with command 2 i'll go to select that and i can just unlock it rather than just unlocking everything which is what the old illustrator used to do so i'm going to unlock the background all you need to do is go up to the rectangle tool it might be underneath the ellipse tool or whatever the last one you used Draw yourself a rectangle on the background and add that first gradient that we've got. The dark gray needs to go at the, at the um, bottom. And if you look at the gradient, it's gonna look something like this on the screen. So dra drag it from top to bottom. And then we can hit Command 2 and just lock that background in place so we can't shift that. I'm gonna select everything that I've drawn. I'm gonna shrink it down, and just move it to one side for a reference. So the first thing we're gonna do, go back to that rectangle tool and select the ellipse. And we're going to draw an ellipse. It's filled it already with the gradient that I last used. So just draw a rough ellipse, hit black, and we're going to stick the height in transform to 600. Make sure you've got the little chain link um, clicked as well. It doesn't really matter about the width, exact dimensions, but something around there, maybe a bit deeper. We can play around with that later once we've finished. Now, with this selected, we're going to change the fill to a stroke by just dragging it across and get rid of the fill and hit the stroke. Then you're gonna select stroke. If you can't see stroke or gradient or any of these transform things, they're all underneath windows. So just go along. You can hit pause if you wanna copy what I've got here, appearance, colors, strokes, symbol swatches, that kind of thing. But let's go back to this stroke. So we're gonna hit the stroke and the weight is gonna be 100 pixels. Then we're gonna go up to object and expand. Fill stroke, it just needs to be stroke, but that's fine, click okay. Then Command C, which is copy, and Command Shift V, which is paste in place. So we've now got two. Let's select the color of this one and just make it a sort of dark gray. And then we can hit enter. When we hit enter, the move box is gonna come up. Now, we don't need a horizontal movement. Sorry, we, we don't need a vertical movement, we need a horizontal movement. And we're gonna make it 100 pixels, which was the same weight as the stroke. So it's moved it exactly 100 pixels. So it's now lined up exactly with the edge of that one, which is important. Now, once you've done this, zoom in on the bottom. And if you can't see rulers, by the way, press Command R and your rulers will appear. Now, with this point selected, so press A and select this bottom point. Drag a ruler in from the left until it snaps onto there. If you can't see the pink smart guides, go to View and smart guides as well, and also snap to point. So then select this one with A, drag your ruler in from the left and snap to point. It just makes this next step a little bit easier. So go back up to your ellipse tool and select rectangle and click and drag from that guide to that guide. And then if you zoom back out with Z and press Alt, you'll zoom out and just select this with V and then hold Alt and Shift and drag another one up to the top until it snaps in place. Now the next thing we're gonna do is select everything with V and we're gonna go across to the toolbar, the shape builder, Shift M is the shortcut. 
Now it's a little bit confusing at first, but if you look at the reference that we've got here, we can then start to build a shape. So we'll start right up at the top and draw into this one and we'll draw into this one there. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing with this one and you just draw over and then let go. So then we've created our two shapes. If you hit V, select this outer one, we can then, in fact, we'll select everything and we'll rotate it with the corner and hold in shift, L snap. So if we then select this top shape and you can color drop if you've got your gradient or you can just add your gradient from here. And we want the gradient to go from left to right, light to dark. Select V and add your gradient. And this gradient, we want to go the other way, but we don't have to redraw it. We just have to go to gradient. And this little box here is reverse gradient and that'll flip our gradient around. And we're almost there, to be honest with you. We're going to add these little highlights in. So if you select this shape and press Command C, Command Shift V, and we'll change this to white, and then Command C, Command Shift V again, we'll change this to gray. And then holding, using your cursors or holding Shift and, and pressing up on your cursors, we're just going to move it up ever so slightly. Just about there is fine. So then what we want to do is press V, select this gray one and select this white one. So they're both selected and you want to go to Pathfinder. Again, if you can't find it, it's up in Windows and we're going to use this one minus front. And what that does is chop the two shapes up and just leaves us with these white slithers. So once we've got those white ones, we'll go to Transparency, hit this drop down here and put Overlay. And that looks about right. Yeah, that's good. So now with V, select everything and press Command G, which groups it together. Move it up a bit and hold in Alt and Shift. We'll drag down another copy. We'll leave it there for now. We don't need to have it under it just yet. So we want to reflect this. So double click the reflect tool and we want a horizontal reflection. Click OK. Then press V, go back up to your rectangle tool, draw a shape over it, covering it. It doesn't have to be exact and then your black and white gradient. And we want the gradient to go from the top to the bottom. So hit the gradient tool, drag from the top to the bottom, press V, select everything, transparency, little burger, make opacity max, mask. And once you've done that, you can play with the opacity in here, but maybe something around 50% is about right. You can also, if it looks right, you can squash it down so the reflection looks a bit different. And then with it all selected, you can just move. If you get it stuck here, by the way, you might have clicked this transparency box here. If you do that, then you can't move your shapes anymore. You can't select anything. So all you have to do is click on this left hand shape and you'll be back in business. So select this and move it up somewhere that looks about right. And we can select our top shape and press command shift and the right hand square bracket, which sends this to the front and that is how you draw the impossible oval. You can use it that way, you can rotate it whichever way you want, maybe make some cool effects with it, get rid of the guides. But I hope that was helpful. Please like and subscribe so I can keep making these videos for you, and I'll see you again next time.